Hey guys, before we get to today's episode, do you know the number one mistake couples make planning their wedding that is costing them a fortune? Most couples are guilty of making the same expensive wedding planning mistakes. And so I put together a free guide to help you save your budget. You can grab the guide at planningcollective.com forward slash free hyphen guides and get the immediate download to see if you've already made any of these mistakes, and if so, how you can get back on track. So don't let these oversights ruin your budget. Grab the free guide today. Planningcollective.com forward slash free hyphen guides, and I'll include the link in the show notes. Now let's get on to the episode. Kate McClellan, pro wedding planner with over 16 years of experience helping more than 400 couples down the aisle. I started Planning Collective to help all couples get through the overwhelm of wedding planning by sharing my actionable tips and tools that I've used over the years working with my clients. We'll focus on getting rid of what I like to call FOWO, the fear of wedding oversight. This is an unfortunate condition that almost every couple will suffer from at some point. Let's get you back to enjoying the planning process. Here we go. Hey guys, Kate here. Welcome back to another episode of the Wedding Planning Collective podcast. It's a cold and rainy fall day here in Michigan, and I am definitely dreaming of Caribbean beaches and swim up bars. So let's talk about honeymoons and destination wedding planning. Whether you know exactly what you want for your honeymoon, have no clue where to start, or maybe you fall somewhere in between, it's important to think through the basics before locking yourself into anything. Just like wedding planning, you want to start with the main pillars so that your planning is intentional and doesn't feel scattered. So make sure you have an idea of what your budget is first. Most couples don't include the honeymoon in their main wedding budget, which is fine, but the funds need to come from somewhere. If you'll be paying for the honeymoon yourselves, have a conversation about what you're comfortable spending. Be realistic, especially since you'll be on the heels of all the wedding expenses. You don't want to end up more stressed or anxious about the trip because of the thought of paying everything off is so overwhelming. And again, just like the wedding, no one else can tell you what you should be spending for your honeymoon. Decide on the budget and then find an option that's realistic within that budget. And as we talk about budget, make sure you're thinking about that big picture number as opposed to just the cost of the flight or resort. If you're not planning on staying at an all-inclusive, you'll also have to make sure that you take out a portion for food, other travel fees, meaning will you need to rent a car or pay for car service, and other potential entertainment costs. So that big picture number will be everything that you will be paying for all together, and then you're going to break it down, just like the wedding budget, based on the different categories. Once you know what your budget for the trip is, let's talk through how to determine what your priorities are. When we discuss this in regards to the wedding, we're referring to the timing of when your wedding will be held, the size of the wedding, the location, and the breakdown of the planning components. For your honeymoon, the timing and location are definitely a huge part of it, and that should be where we start. We'll talk more about timing in just a minute, but what I recommend that you do is sit down with a pen and paper or your notes app and just start making notes of what you would like out of your honeymoon. Do you have a certain city, country, or state in mind? Would your ideal trip be relaxing on the beach or a trip filled with big city museums and sightseeing? Are you looking for something adventurous or are you more chill? Do you want to be super social and make honeymoon friends? or prefer to see as few people as possible. And remember, you'll most likely be coming off of a very busy few weeks with the wedding. So what do you think you'll be in the mood for? As you start jotting down ideas, get more specific about what you want to do. For example, if your dream honeymoon is to go to Ireland, do you picture the quiet countryside, hitting the big cities, or maybe castle hopping along the shores? If a sunny Caribbean resort is more your vibe, would you want to spend most of the trip on the beach or at the swim-up bar, or fill your days with scuba diving, zip lining, and checking out the local towns? And maybe you're a mix of all of the different options. If so, write down your wish list of what would be part of your honeymoon, and then you can circle back once you start to narrow things down. The timing of when you go on your honeymoon is also something you'll need to think about at this stage. 
Gone are the days that couples leave their reception after dinner and head right to the airport. You spent all this time and money on your wedding. Why would you want to leave early? If your work schedule allows, I highly recommend that you do not leave the day after your wedding. With all of the excitement and prep for the wedding, it's not ideal to also have to add on the honeymoon packing and prep to your list. Waiting a day or two to leave also gives you time to have a farewell brunch the following day or just chill with your guests and family to wrap up the celebration of the wedding. Another great idea, especially if you're short on days off of work, is to have what we call a mini moon right after the wedding and wait to take a bigger trip later. You can go somewhere for just a couple of nights that's a short drive or maybe a staycation close by to relax right after the wedding. Down the road, maybe for a first anniversary, you can always plan a bigger, more official honeymoon. This also gives you more time to save up after all of the wedding expenses and gives you something to look forward to as the post-wedding crash can leave you feeling a bit blue. Once you have an idea of your honeymoon budget and the possible locations, I recommend you reach out to a travel agent or advisor to help you with the booking. Most work under a commission from the companies that they work with, so their services are free for you to utilize. Travel advisors can really help you find the best deals, avoid locations or resorts that may not be a great fit for you, and help you navigate through any last minute changes, cancellations, or other travel issues. Many years ago, oh, it may even be a decade at this point, I was a part of an organization that had a partnership with Sandals Resorts, and I was lucky enough to go on what they call a fam trip to check out one of their properties. It was such an amazing trip, and I was so impressed by the resorts that I decided to learn more about the different properties and offerings. Since then, I've been to most of their resorts and have helped many couples, including close friends and family, plan their honeymoons there. I wanted to take this opportunity to share with you some of my favorite details about the resorts and why I highly recommend them. To start off, the Sandals brand is certainly not the cheapest all-inclusive resort out there, but let me share with you why. They really do offer a five-star luxury included experience while also being all-inclusive. Yes, they have the buffets, but they are each run by their individual chefs and have other restaurants on property that are all included within your booking at no additional cost. Each property has many different restaurants representing global cuisine, and you can go to as many of them as you want as often as you would like. When you go to the bar, you're not going to be served that bottom shelf, watered down drink that we're all familiar with from those spring break resorts. They partner with brands like Absolute, Robert Mondavi, Tangare, Bombay, Johnny Walker, and Appleton Rum, amongst others. And this is all part of their standard options. Though, if you do have a more selective taste in wines, you can certainly purchase higher end bottles at each restaurant. One of my favorite things to do when I'm there is to try different drinks and food that I would never try at home for fear of wasting money on a drink or a dish I don't like. There is no way I would have spent money on escargot at a restaurant at home without knowing if I like it or not. Turns out escargot is not for me, but no worries. I tried it and then I was able to order something else after for dinner. And it's a perfect time to try that pina colada, Mai Tai, or White Russian that you don't want to order at a bar, but you've always wondered what it tastes like without having to waste $20 on each drink. Outside of the food and drinks, they also have a great variety of water and land sports that are included in your booking. Snorkeling, tennis, golf, pickleball, paddleboarding, and Hobie Cats are just a part of what's offered. Of course, it depends on which resort you're at. But if you're a scuba diver, you also get up to two tanks a day at no extra cost. They also have many excursions and activities outside of the resort that you can book at an additional cost, but you certainly will not get bored with everything that's included on property. One of the best things about the resorts are the variety of rooms that they offer at a variety of price points. While your honeymoon is certainly a great time to splurge a bit, the lower category rooms will still get you access to all of the benefits of the resort, while not totally breaking the bank. So if your honeymoon budget isn't huge, but you're not planning on spending much time in the room anyway, it can be a great way to get you on property to experience all of the restaurants and the different services without costing you too much. If you do have a bit more to spend or you want to splurge, you can get some amazing swim up rooms, balconies with soaking tubs or pools, 
and even butler service to save your cabana by the pool each morning. And if you're really looking for a memorable trip, they now have several resorts in Jamaica with over-the-water bungalows that don't involve the long flights to Fiji or Bora Bora. While I haven't had the pleasure of staying in one of these rooms, we did get to tour the -the over-the-water bungalows a few years ago, and it was truly stunning. All this said, one of my favorite things about going to a Sandals resort is the way the staff makes you feel so welcome. They make a huge effort in their hiring and training process to focus on customer service, and it really does show. If you're looking to travel with family, their partner brand, Beaches, is perfect for that. And most of the Beaches resorts are also close to a Sandals resort, so a common practice for destination weddings is to have the family and guests stay at the Beaches resort so you as a couple can have a little more privacy staying at Sandals. If you are interested in learning more about the resort options, I'm gonna include more information on our blog for this podcast episode. Full disclosure, just like a travel advisor, I do earn a commission on any bookings made through that link, but if that worries you, you can simply go to sandals.com or beaches.com and take a look at all of the different options. I technically am a travel advisor and I have the ability to earn a commission for any resort chains or any bookings, but I only choose to include sandals and beaches because of my experience with them. I am confident you will have an amazing honeymoon or destination wedding at any of their properties. While we're talking travel and honeymoon plans, I wanna address a common question that's asked about the legalities of traveling internationally right after your wedding. If you're planning on changing your last name, hold off until after your honeymoon to change your passport and other legal documentation. Your boarding pass will need to match your legal ID, so I recommend you keep everything under your maiden name until you get home, unless you're having a significant gap in between the wedding and your honeymoon. The other thing you want to make sure to do is bring a copy of your marriage license with you on the honeymoon. Many resorts, including Sandals, airlines, and other companies will offer upgrades to couples on their honeymoon, but they will usually require some kind of proof that it's actually your honeymoon. Don't be shy about asking. You never know if a couple of first class seats are going to be empty or if they have an upgraded room category available for you. Before we wrap up, let's chat about a few things you need to consider if you're planning on having a destination wedding. First, and probably most importantly, is that if you're planning a destination wedding, you need to be understanding of guests that are not going to be able to make it. If there are people that you absolutely need to be there, have an honest conversation with them about the anticipated costs and see if they'll be able to make that work. While a destination wedding typically costs the couple a lot less overall than a more traditional wedding, the cost of being in the wedding party or being a guest at a destination wedding is usually much more than the traditional wedding at home. And even if you're giving them plenty of notice to save up, that may not be an expense that they can or want to take on. You can also offer to cover some of their travel costs to make sure that they can attend without the financial stress. And one thing to look into if you're thinking about a destination wedding, especially if you'll be in a different state or country, is to ask what are the residency rules for wedding ceremonies? Some countries require that you be in the country for several days or even weeks before the ceremony can be considered legal, and that's not something you want to discover once you're there. The easy workaround here is that you have a civil ceremony at home before you go, so you don't need to worry about the legalities of the ceremony while you're there. And if you are looking at having a wedding ceremony at Sandals, Beaches, or any other larger resort chains, they usually have a wedding team that can help you with this process. All right, I want to know where you are thinking about going for your honeymoon. Head on over to the Wedding Planning Collective Facebook group and let me know where you want to go. And if you found this episode helpful, I would love it if you could take a quick second to rate and review. It would really mean the world to me, and it would help other couples find the wedding planning tips they need. Thank you so much, and I will see you in the next episode. This episode is brought to you by the Wedding Planning Blueprint course, the new way to plan your wedding. I've been a professional wedding planner for almost 20 years now, and though nothing can beat the excitement of a wedding day, my favorite moments are sharing the real wedding planning experiences and tips that no one else is talking about. I designed this course to help take you from feeling lost and overwhelmed to educated and in control of your wedding plans. 
The course includes 24 lessons that are structured to help you first create your wedding planning foundation and then build upon it in an intentional way so that you don't make one of the most common and expensive mistakes, planning your wedding backwards. The newest feature in the course, Wedding Chat GPT, allows you to ask your wedding planning questions and get professional answers 24 seven. The answers are pulled from the course content, which makes the responses reliable and actionable. This will be a true game changer, saving you time and money while you plan your big day. To see a full list of what's included in the course, head to planningcollective.com forward slash WPB course. Working with a wedding planner would literally cost you thousands, but now you can have the expert advice and tips for under $150. And while the course is a steal, I do recognize that that's still an investment. Make sure you grab our free download, Expensive Wedding Planning Mistakes, and I can promise that that alone will save you the cost of the course. You can find our free guides at planningcollective.com, and I look forward to helping you plan your wedding. 